We have discussed all of the conflicts connected to the stories, except for Mask of the Red Death. So we discussed the pedestrian's single conflict, the two possible conflicts and contents of a dead man's pockets. Now let's turn our attention to Mask of the Red Death. Remember this framework? So let's work with it. Uh, who would you consider to be the protagonist of Mask of the Red Death? Daniel. Uh, I've got his name, but the main character. Yeah. Prince Prospero. Very good. Please notice that Prospero is not exactly the nicest guy in the world. He's a protagonist, but not necessarily one that you would like. Um, there's a concept in literature called the anti-hero, which is a protagonist that you, the reader, do not like, and he's one of those. But um, still, he is the protagonist. All right, and what's the antagonist in this case? Zach. The Red Death. The Red Death, correct. And since the Red Death is a plague, is a disease, what type of conflict is this, Zach? Uh, nature. Omar. You would think that because of the strange, strange spiritual nature of the guy who walks in, that's true. But you've got to think not about what this guy is, but what he represents. He doesn't represent a ghost. He represents the Red Death. He represents death. So, Riley? Person versus nature. I can see that mistake, Omar. But here we've got person versus nature. What's Prospero's motivation? Uh, let's see, Max. <laughs> yeah, very simple, right? Prospero is motivated to survive, which is understandable to you because he walls himself in a palace to escape the Red Death. So yes, very clear. OK, what's nature's motivation here? Yeah. Well, nature's motivation, like in all actuality, it doesn't really have any motivation. Correct. Yeah, very good. So um, Riley's just explained that nature can't have a motivation because nature doesn't have a will or intention. That's absolutely correct. So when we're thinking about nature's motivation with an antagonist position, we could say just what the natural function of nature is. And Riley's getting to it. Nature insists that all things die. All living things die. Here's your happy thought for the day. The one certainty of your life is that someday you will die. Everything else is up in the air. Isn't that exciting, Daniel? Don't you feel great now on a Friday going into the weekend that the one certainty of your life is death? <laughs> hey, hey, English 10 is all about happiness, especially the literature we read. Um, all things die. Nature is a force. Uh, nature in this is an antagonist because it is the force of death and Prospero hopes to survive, probably forever. He hopes that his wealth and power will preserve him. How would we begin this claim sentence, Sierra? Do you remember how we began those sentences yesterday? Just begin it for me. In. Correct. Mask in the Mask of the Red Death. What's next? Do you remember the author's name? Edgar Allan Poe. Okay. Thank you, Sierra. Somebody pick it up for me there. We've got the beginning of the claim statement. In the mas in Mask of the Red Death, Edgar Allan Poe, Alex. There's conflict between the protagonist. Hold on, pause. I want the wording correct. There. You wouldn't use there, right? Because we already have a subject to the sentence, Edgar Allan Poe. So attach a verb to it. What kind of verbs were we using yesterday? Um, describes. Describes. We'll, we'll take a look at that in a moment. But that, that works for now. Describes what?
sorry, I dropped off at nature. Alex's claim here is both awesome and horrible. The horrible is not bothering me because the horrible is all about the language. It's wordy, it's complicated, it doesn't flow very well. That's what Alex is missing. But you know what he has intact? The ideas. The ideas are present. Remember how. He's got the protagonist. He's got the antagonist. And then he has their goal. Oops, uh, goal's down here. Alex remembered, as I mentioned yesterday, that you've got to capture all of that. We just have to clarify it a little bit. I like how trying to kill him is now bigger. OK. So I want to I, I take Alex's ideas, and I want to frame them as excellent language. And that means that we keep what's up here, we change what's up here. Anybody want to give it a shot? No. Come on. Remember what I said about writing in my class. It's just a matter of repetition of repeating forms and patterns, you should have those forms and patterns and notes from claim sentences yesterday. You've got three claim sentences. Take a look at them and see how you could use the basically same grammatical structure to write this one. No? Usually I torture you for a little while and make you do the work, but you're fortunate that we're running short on time. So I'll do it for you. Um, I would take out describes. And I would use develops or constructs, develops a conflict, between Prospero's need for survival and the inevitable force of death. I've taken out Alex's word nature. But taking out Alex's word nature does not mean that I have taken out the antagonist. It's implied so clearly by talking about the force of death that I need not mention the word nature. For Sparrow, I've got the antagonist. I've got his need for survival, as Alex told me I needed. And then I've got kind of condensed into one idea both nature and its interest. This is now clearer. And very similar to the Leonard Mead, protag or Leonard Mead uh, conflict in the pedestrian that we had sketched. Okay, good enough for that.